Cougs house. The Houston Cougars going into year two of the Big 12, and it looks a lot different. But it might look even more different very, very soon, and Cougs need to be happy about it. You are Locked On Cougs, your daily podcast on the Houston Cougars, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome to Locked On Cougs, daily podcast about your Houston Cougars. I'm your host, Houston-born teacher and coach Parker Angel. And whether you're a Houston fan or just a hater who came to stop by, thank you for making Locked On Cougs your first listen of the day. Appreciate you making it your first listen each and every day here at Locked On Cougs. I'm joining the conversation, but don't know what to say. Tell us in the comments down below. What your favorite soup is. Uh, it was really hot today, but not feeling the best. A little under the weather here and there. I think actually the heat got to me. Soup is a big comfort food. So what's your favorite soup? Today's show is brought to you by Game Time. Uh, more on that fun later. But you can get the best tickets, the best prices guaranteed through the Game Time app. Now today, we're going to be talking about Houston's old American Athletic Conference opponent, UConn, potentially making the jump to the Big 12, as was initially reported yesterday by Locked On Big 12 and Locked On UConn. Both, there's apparently real flames to this smoke. I want to talk about kind of how this unfolds, what the story is, and then how we'll play into Houston's basketball and football programs. So let's just jump on in. Here's the deal. It's very, very serious conversations, apparently. Uh, but on Tuesday, August 20th, Drake of Locked On Big 12, Mark Zanetto of Locked On UConn had a conversation. And this rumor that's been milling about for legitimately almost a decade at this point may be really about to come through. Mark is very connected to the UConn scene, right? Mark's been doing the UConn coverage thing for a while. Locked On UConn is a relatively new show for us here at Locked On. Uh, but he's been covering them for a while. Big time UConn guy, right? And he pointed out that he was, you know, talking to uh, a person that works with, he didn't name anybody, a person that works with boosters and IL collectives, et cetera, the money, the money side of things. And the quote from that person was that this is imminent and that it could be, quote, weeks before something is announced. That's a very short time frame in the frame of this whole thing, right? I want to stress, like, this is something that's been rumored since 2016, right? One of the last rounds of expansion. Uh, Big 12 was looking at other programs. Ultimately, that kind of led us down the line to the group of Houston, Cincinnati, UCF, and BYU eventually getting listed as add to the Big 12 once Texas and Oklahoma decided they were going to leave. But back in 2016, when Houston was a very hot football program and you had, you know, Cincinnati was on their way up and so on, UConn was also being thrown around as a potential Big 12 program. Right. And so this is not completely out of thin air. Um, I, I do think it's interesting that Mark Senato was quick to point out that he doesn't think the UConn fan base would be initially on board with this. Um, but I think one thing that Mark and Drake and people following the story have pointed out very thoroughly is that the name UConn has not gone away from this conversation since 2016. Now, a naysayer would say, well, they also haven't been added, and they've been in the conversation the whole time, and, and I get that. But generally speaking, if they continue to put smoke around something, there's fire on that thing, or fire in that thing. That metaphor got mixed up on me there. Um, but the truth is, is that it's not just the nameless and faceless on Twitter, or the types of folks on Twitter that throw a bunch of stuff against the wall and hope something sticks. Dellinger, right? Uh, Thamel, these guys that are at the you know highest of end, the insiders in college football and college athletics news, continue to link UConn to the Big 12. And that's not for nothing. They've never stopped, and that's important, coming from very trustworthy sources. Now, I think that in looking at, um, you know, if you're uh, just focusing on the sports side of this, not the dollars and cents side, the big thing that I thought was interesting they brought up in talking about this was the potential impact on future performance, the, the gigantic leaps and bounds you got to go through and travel. And frankly, when you look at Big 12 programs in, in basketball, by the end of the season, they're worn out. It's an exhausting Big 12 gauntlet. In football, it's got as much parity as anyone in football. <laughs> the, the, the top and bottom of the league are not separated by a whole lot more than a couple of hairs, right? 
Um, I think it's interesting, though, in looking at this, that the ultimate play here is going to be to potentially bring in UConn in a full athletic department since. I know that's going to ruffle some people the wrong way. This, again, has been talked about for a long time, so people have very established opinions on this. Uh, and some people really don't want the UConn football program coming. It's fairly far behind, especially when you compare it to men's and women's basketball at UConn. Uh, but truthfully, I think an advantage to the Big 12 and their gigantic conference, the bunch of parity that goes coast to coast, would almost be offering that football spot as well and kind of offering a way to help boost the UConn football program to ultimately bring in all those UConn dollars into the fold. Um, if, they, if they wanted to do just a basketball deal regionally, which is a lot more important in basketball than it is in football, regionally, why wouldn't they also be talking to the ACC and the Big Ten, right? Regionally, those make a lot more sense. They have a lot more schools in the backyard of a UConn. And then UConn with the basketball traditional powers and the rivalry games with the Dukes of the world. And like that would make a lot of sense as well. Syracuse is right there. Uh, that would all make a lot of sense in building up their brand in that way. If they were really looking at basketball only or Olympic sport only deals. Right. Um, I, I want to stress that, and we'll talk about this in the basketball segment in a moment. Uh, basketball runs the money at UConn, and it's very unique. In fact, of public institutions, once we have data for, uh, it is the only hoops program that out-revenues their football program year in, year out, without fail. Now, they've only had football in a modern sense since 2000. Uh, been in the Big East, out of the Big East. They're pr present tense independent. They're obviously in the American Athletic Conference for a second present tense they're independent in football um but of d1 universities they're the only school that is out revenueing their football program with their basketball program their revenue comes from a bunch of different ways uh new york city and yukon have a bunch of connections um connecticut as a state and the city of new york have a bunch of connections as well um and then obviously one big deal here is yukon is in stores connecticut the other big thing in Connecticut is a four-letter network that considers itself the worldwide leader in sports. Now, I'm not saying that ESPN would ever show favoritism, right? But ESPN shows favorable coverage to UConn in a lot of different ways. Okay, so I did say it. All right, I, I hear you. I, I, okay, I said it. I think ESPN has a lot of favoritism towards UConn in a bunch of different ways. Okay, sorry. But that would work in the Big 12s favor it also could be a reason that this is happening we know espn is obviously a big part of everything happening with the big 12 having the pro router for all the different schools coming in if they're coming from a power conference is a big reason the big 12 keeps expanding right espn has a big say in that if espn has these connections to uconn because of their proximity their availability to be on the ground there for things um wouldn't it make sense that they want to also pull them in. I, I, I think that that's a key part in this. It's kind of getting kind of brushed under the rug. It's like, oh, they also have the worldwide leader of sports in their backyard. Da, 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 da. Right now, while I would argue locked on as international at this point and coming for them uh, we, as an international company, we don't necessarily have any backyard that has a single university. We have all of these universities, right? Um but ESPN being in the UConn's backyard is a big deal, and I think that's kind of being underreported in this. Um, I also would point out, too, I think one thing that's going underreported in this, as far as the overarching story goes, is that your mark is not a fool. Uh, your mark is in a lot of things that prove to be very smart. Um, I think a lot of people look at this in like a your mark likes basketball kind of way, and that's, that's fair. Your mark also likes winning, and here's the deal. There's a part of Brett Yormark, I, I haven't talked to him, I haven't talked to his circle or whatever, but there, there is a part of Brett Yormark that understands UConn is going to leave the Big East at some point. And Brett Yormark's opponent is not the Big East, it's the ACC. And if the name of the game is being the bigger, more powerful conference, and he feels like some power may be about to leave the ACC and the Florida State, the Clemson, all of those lawsuits, why wouldn't he go get a very natural 
next pickup, right? The same way the Big 12 brought in Houston, Central Florida, BYU, and Cincinnati when they lost Texas and Oklahoma, why wouldn't he want to make sure he cut that option off for the ACC and pulling in a UConn to the Big 12 to make sure that the ACC couldn't just add them when a Florida State leaves, right? Now, I want to talk more specifically about Houston and basketball and how this impacts things in the H in a second. But if you're bouncing around Houston and you need something to go do, a concert, uh, need to get to a theater, you need to go watch a comedy show, go watch the Astros, or you need tickets to Houston Cougar football in the very, 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 very near future, the place to go do that and get those tickets is Game Time. Download the Game Time app today. And they have a great personal experience, all kinds of different customizations to your account. Uh, they got all kinds of uh, last minute flash deals. Make sure you're getting the best prices. They have the lowest price guarantee. Uh, you can find a ticket in the same section and row for less somewhere else. They will give you 110% of the difference in credit on the Game Time app. Game Time ticket coverage means your tickets are covered with the most flexible customer service policy in the ticketing. Industry. Take the guesswork out of buying concert tickets with Game Time. Download Game Time app today. Create an account. Use code Locked On Cost for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code Locked On College. L O C K E D O N C O L L E G for twenty dollars off. Download Game Time today. Last day's lowest prices guaranteed. All right, now you've heard us talk a lot about FanDuel here at Locked On Sports. Uh, Locked On Cook's a big fan of FanDuel, fan of FanDuel, because they got all kinds of great things for you as a consumer. And now they got a little bit of something different. Now through September 22nd, all FanDuel customers can just put a $5 bet down. It's just like an expensive cup of coffee and get a three-week free trial of NFL Sunday ticket from YouTube and YouTube TV. Then with a YouTube TV base plan, you want to watch every regular season Sunday afternoon out of market game in the NFL. All you need to do is get a Google account, a current form of payment, and cancel any time. Put five dollars down on something on FanDuel like the Astros, and through three weeks free trial NFL Sunday ticket from YouTube and YouTube TV. It's FanDuel.com/slash locked on to download America's number one sportsbook. FanDuel, the sportsbook partner of the MLB. All right, so we got to quit beating around the bush here. UConn is apparently a very real option for the Big 12. UConn is a very familiar option for Houston. And Houston, as a school that has a you know, premier basketball program, is going to be most interested in this uh, in terms of a field of competition sense in the way that UConn adds to the basketball of this conference. But I would also point out that this is a big deal for basketball dollars in the Big 12. Uh, UConn, in looking at the rest of the basketball conference, would probably not come alone. I think that was an interesting part of the conversation that Mark and Drake were trying to you know, read between the lines on is, who would that other program be? Would it be Gonzaga? Well, Gonzaga didn't even have football, let alone a program that you maybe don't want as much. They don't have it there. Um, but you could see some sort of an Olympic sports-only kind of deal. But again, if UConn can strike that, why wouldn't they stick to someone closer to their – it's closer to them in a regional sense. Uh, could they be coming with other potential ACC schools, a Duke, uh, Carolina, someone else that wants to play Big 12 basketball and sees the ACC falling apart in the near future? Who knows, right? I would point out, though, um, that even with a less than Big 12 caliber football program in the present tense, and again, third segment's about football, I think it makes more sense than you might realize. But with a less than Big 12 caliber revenue program in football, their overall athletic program revenues very comparably to the Big 12. Uh, obviously, their women's basketball program is the best of the best to this point in the history of women's basketball. Revenues very well. I think they were in the green last several years in a row taking COVID out, obviously. Um, overall, their athletic department has revenues in the $90 million range, just over that mark. For reference, the low end of the original Big 12 schools that didn't get a little bit different share were making just over 100. These are not that far apart, is what I'm trying to say here, 
right? Obviously, uh, West Virginia and Kansas State are a little bit more money, but it's, it's in the grand scheme of things, not much more money, especially when you think about like the infusion of cash that the Big 12 would potentially bring, especially to something like a, a football program. Um, frankly, the revenue dollars for the overall athletic department at a UConn because of the success of their programs, the donations that brings. Again, they're on TV all the time. The Big East, the premier uh, basketball conference outside of the Big 12, I would argue. I like the Big East more than the ACC for a number of reasons, but that's not today's show. Uh, their revenue numbers are comparable to that of an Oregon state or a Washington state. So people, I think, are intuitively saying, well, look at the football program numbers at Oregon state and Washington state. Of course, we want to take them over a UConn. That's going to bring more dollars to Houston. When in reality, UConn basketball does so well financially that it actually kind of offsets that and kind of makes them more competitively even. Right? UConn, in terms of basketball, is the program that Houston is going to be very soon. It's a, it was a very quick upstart dynasty in 1999 with their first title. They won six NCAA tournament championships since 1999. Houston has had this quick, rapid growth. Got to the Final Four in 2021. You and I don't need to break it all down. We know they would have gotten there without injuries a couple more times since then. And I think that's kind of where this thing is headed. UConn did their six titles with three different coaches. I would argue Houston's going to do some stuff with both Kelvin and Kellen Sampson. Obviously, it's a couple different coaches, comparable programs. All time, Houston's actually got the edge over UConn in basketball 9-6. to six. Uh, Both were in the American Athletic Conference from 20 the 13-14 season to the 2019-20 season. Um, I would point out that in 2013-14, Houston actually uh, split the series with UConn, which is notable because UConn going to win the national championship that year. That was the last year, I believe, with Coach Dickey. Uh, anyway, that was a year you come on Tyler Houston flew with them. Um, I, I think that the big thing UConn brings to the conference though is for Houston. The knock in basketball has been for the better part of more than a half decade for sure. Well, who are you playing? Who are you playing? Well, the answer is whoever lines up across from us. But the truth is. Well, you and I understand what Kelvin Sampson does with this non-conference coach, a bunch, a bunch of different styles of basketball, well-coached teams from a bunch of different levels of programs, and ultimately builds a schedule that while it doesn't score as high on your Kim Palms as a handful of other you know schools that are blue bloods like Houston's striving to be, uh, it, it is a schedule that very much prepares Houston for, both in terms of health and strategy, a good run to the conference, whether it's the American or the Big 12. And so it used to be they criticized, oh, but you're playing in the American. There's no one there. Well, okay, the American got good at basketball. Houston still wins it. Oh, but look at your non-conference. You haven't gotten to the Big 12 yet. They get the Big 12, they win it. They're non-conference, they win them, right? Adding Arizona this year, UConn in a couple years, ultimately that argument's going to just fizzle. There's going to be no logical argument against the teams Houston is playing and beating on a regular basis in basketball. And that's a big deal in basketball because so much of it comes down to rankings and voters and things like that. Right. Um, obviously there's also the March madness seating and uh, there's different qualifiers to get into the conversation for different seats there, but ultimately you still are getting people picking things within a committee. Um, Having the strength of schedule is important. Adding a UConn and potentially a partner in terms of basketball would be huge. It would also be likely two schools that would make the tournament fairly regularly. That's big because the more schools in the tournament you've got as a conference, the more units you get back as a conference and kickbacks financially. That's a good thing. Adding schools that get to the March Madness tournament makes your school more money, right? That's something that helps Houston in this instance too. So a bunch of ways that this actually helps the Houston basketball program. I would also point out that Houston could then line up and beat UConn and have these big wins that ultimately help skyrocket Houston to, you know, higher ceilings and, and kind of, again, shut out some of these naysayers. Now they spent part of the last couple of seasons each season being ranked number one in the country. So I don't mean like there's a whole bunch of stuff above that. Um, but but I do think 
that getting the chance to play his opponent during it would be a big deal. I also think um, while Kelvin's become a very national recruiter, he's still focused on a handful of the top guys in Texas, but the program recruits nationally very much. Having a foothold in the Northeast would be a, a good thing for the conference. Uh, you can pull in New York City. You can pull in prep schools. You can pull in a bunch of different good basketball programs in that area. You don't have to focus much on the South and the Montverds and the Lynx. Um you know, obviously the UIL system in Texas is very strong, but um, you, you can do a bunch of different things as far as who you're pulling in, right? And so um, I think that that's important to do. Uh, I think that this adding in basketball only helps Houston, and, and I think that people get that. The more complicated one may be how this helps in, in football. And so we're going to spend some time talking about UConn football and then how it helps in football. But first... As the summer's wrapping up, you're getting stuff to get ready back. You're getting stuff to get ready to go back to school. That involves buying things, you know, backpacks, book bags, pencils, pens, highlighters, that spiral you forgot to get on back to school day. Wherever you get things, right, go find it at Ibotta. Now, Ibotta is a free app that lets you earn cash back every time you shop. So those pencils, those book bags, that extra set of highlighters, whatever it is, you can earn hundreds of, uh, earn money back on hundreds of items from groceries to beauty supplies, toys, school supplies, and more. So make sure you're beating inflation no matter what you're purchasing. Other apps can give you points that don't really amount to much. With Ibotta, you earn cash back that you can withdraw to your bank account. That's cash, PayPal, gift cards, whatever you want, but they get offer you cash as well. Simply add offers in the app, upload your receipts, and voila, the money is yours. You can save over two two thousand four hundred brands and shop on over a thousand different retailers, including your favorite stores like Lowe's, Macy's, Sephora, Best Buy, and more. Simon, you joined the over fifty million users who use Ibotta to earn cash back every time they shop. Right now, Ibotta is over is offering our listeners five dollars just for trying it. Use the code Locked On College. Just go to the App Store, Google Play Store, and download the free Ibotta app and start earning cash back. Using code Locked On College, it's I B O T T A in the Google Player App Store, and use code Locked On College today. All right, so football, UConn football specifically. Now, I want to stress that in the nostalgic way I talk about Houston sports sometimes, I understand uh, that UConn football brings up some bad memories. Um, because it's 2015, right? So 2015, if you were new to the university, if you're young, if you weren't paying attention to college football back then, or if you've just blacked it out of your memory, um, 2015, Houston's 10-0. I believe they're ranked 13th in the country at the time. They beat a top 25 Memphis the week before. Early in the season, they beat Louisville. Um, handful of good AAC opponents. Um, and UConn. A trip to UConn, I should say, sat between number 25 Memphis, number 16 Navy. Uh, it was clearly a trap game. Houston goes in ranked number 13th in the country uh, and drops one. I don't know. They drop one. Play the crap. Lost game. And um, Houston would go on to beat top 10 Florida State in the Peach Bowl, finish top 10 in the AP, finish top 20 in the college football playoff rankings. Great successful 2015 season it was thoroughly enjoyable to say the least but there's always been this feeling for folks that were watching at the time right that like they just beat UConn like they were supposed to who knows who knows I, I don't know if they get in the top four in the college football playoff but they get to a New Year's Six Bowl does that catapult the next season right like uh, they are I, I don't know where things could have gone better obviously but being undefeated, you're starting to talk like, are they the first group of five team to make noise about like we deserve being in this playoff the way Central Florida did a couple years later or Cincinnati ultimately did in 2021, right? Um, I don't know. Part of me may want to just right the wrong as far as going up and beating UConn in football and letting them join the Big 12 to do it. But truthfully, I would point out that while UConn's football program has dipped in their independency Lately, um, you know, they, they did make four straight bowls between 2007 and 2010, ultimately ending in a Fiesta Bowl, right? Um, and 
that they've actually made some improvements to the program in the last few years that make them feel like they're trying to grow into a Big 12 program. Now, as far behind as you might think Houston is, I'd point out UConn is further behind than that in terms of their football program. Uh, much like Houston, though, they feel like they've got their coach. Uh, I would argue Houston's got a better coach, but uh, UConn's got Jim Mora. That's the son, not the playoffs guy, but their son, uh, Jim Mora, uh, who was at UCLA for a second and stuff like that. This is his third year there. So, again, he spent time at UCLA at Pac-12. Their defensive coordinator uh, was at Mississippi State, which connects to Houston because the defense coordinator was the defense coordinator at Mississippi State, while Kevin Barbe, Houston's offense coordinator, was the offense coordinator at Mississippi State. So there is some crossover weird connection there, but also much like Houston's like investing by going in the SEC coordinator, they've actually done the same thing, right? Um, efforts have been growing to build their program through the transfer portal. Uh, they got Nick Evers as a quarterback who went to, I guess, Wisconsin out of high school and then Oklahoma and is now at UConn. They've got a linebacker, Eric Gilliard from Kansas, Louis Hanson's a six, six tight end from Michigan, uh, Deja Harrison is a wide receiver from UT Austin. They've got transfer talent from top programs. They're making the effort, to say the least, in terms of building the program up. They connected with a New York-based consulting firm on growing their uh, presence in the NIL space. Obviously, men's and women's basketball are as, as good as in the country in those spaces, but they joined with them to create a, a more visible presence in all of their sports. And while it's still a very new relationship, it's clear effort to do something with that football program, right? And so I would argue that Houston is re – I mean, I'm not arguing. This is very much a fact. Houston's rebuilding as a football program, right? The argument I would make is that as a rebuilding football program in the Big 12, a conference filled with parity in football, again – it's one of the most fun conferences in football this year because you don't know who's going to win on any given Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. You don't know what day the games are happening or who's going to win them. It's constant entertainment in that aspect. Houston, as a rebuilding program, would benefit from having other rebuilding programs. I repeat, Houston, as a rebuilding program, would benefit from having other rebuilding programs. Right uh, now, I think Houston Dream was going to act pretty quickly. Uh, the first year, again, qualitative measurements of growth, but year two and three, they got some big time recruits in, some big time young kids in the program, great leadership in the staff and veterans that you know got a lot of guys out, brought a lot of guys in. Uh, I think the rebuild is going to go quickly in Houston. But man, wouldn't it be nice to have some cupcakes along the way? We talk about Houston having the fifth toughest schedule by last season to wins and loss percentage of anyone in college football. There's no cupcakes on this schedule. And I feel like pulling in a UConn, who's also rebuilding their program, would be a way to get that in the conference, right? Um, so, yes, it's it's partially about revenge from 2015. Uh, for what it's worth, Houston as a program is 3-1 and one against UConn in football, that one loss being the one that stings so, so much uh, in terms of the all-time records books. But I do feel like Houston having a conference opponent that is starting at a, I think a national perspective would say similar. I would disagree with that. But I think a national perspective would say similar spot, rebuilding. Um, I, I think that that would be a good, relatively frequent bar of measurement. How are you doing in this conference and it's that program? Okay, we win five games, they win four games. We're doing better, right? Those kinds of things I think would be good for this program. And are they good for the fan base, right? You never want to be last. <laughs> you want to have programs behind you. The other thing is, if these investments that UConn is making are starting to pay off for them, maybe it turns into a program that grows and you've got a strong opponent. Again, they're in a very good part of the country uh, for recruiting. They're, frankly, not horribly far away from West Virginia as far as uh, you know opponents go. Cincinnati, similar. Um, all the eastern seaboard's fairly close and connected, you know, blends together. But um, I, I think that this makes sense in football for Houston. Now, if this were 2026 Houston, 2027 Houston, the Houston that I think is going to be really, really strong. I mean, it might happen before that, but the Houston thing is going to be really, really strong. I might be singing a different tune. I'm not going to lie to you. But in the present tense, 
bring me games that will be competitive and fun, and Houston get some wins on the board. Uh, give me a program that's rebuilding just like we are, and let's have something like that to measure with. I think Houston's going to measure favorably. Let's have something like that to measure with. Now, I can see you shaking your head. You probably disagree. Talk to me in the comments down below. Find me on social media. I'm at painsworth 5 and 2 wherever you get your social media fix. And we can talk about it. I love talking about this kind of stuff. Um, probably to a fault. This is a Houston Cougars show. I'm talking about the Big 12 as a whole. But I think that pertains pretty closely to the team that won the Big 12 regular season basketball title. Uh, again, that's Pains with 5 and social media. If you're looking for a second list in the day, I am recommending, again, go check out that Locked On Big 12 episode with Drake Toll. Go check out whatever he is to say about what's going on in the conference. Who's in? Who's out? Previewing the conference football season. What have you? Locked on Cougars. <laughs> locked on Cougars is a prime member of Locked On Podcast. Now, it's your team, our Houston Cougars, every day. Go Cougs.